Hello there everybody, it's Sally here and welcome to another edition of Tuesday Teaching Tips and today it's, oh, we're going to be in two different places so there's going to be a bit of camera movement, we'll see whether that works or not. Now, I don't know whether any of you have ever struggled to convey the teaching of a dotted crotchet and a quaver or a dotted quarter note and an eighth note to your students. So we've had a recent conversation in our community, in our curiosity land about this. So I thought, okay, well, I'll come on and demonstrate it live. My approach, one, one thing that I do, and this is only just a small part of it, of course, but here's how I would start it off and get it all going. And there are three elements to this. The first element is to make sure that you start with a known song or a known piece, something that students already have in their head, ideally. Um, or you put it in there in a couple of weeks prior to this. So we'll start going to that in a minute. The second thing is to make sure that they have an oral and a physical sense of the rhythm. That's the second thing. And then the third thing is tend to follow it up with a visual um, uh, representation of the rhythm. Okay, so three things I'm just going to show you as quickly as I can. You want them to hear and have a sense of what this rhythm is before you actually expose them to it, make it conscious. And um, here in the UK, we quite like London Bridge is falling down. That's one, for example. Um, of course, there's the Dvorak New World Symphony, the slow movement. Dee -da -da, dee -da -da. That's also quite a well-known one. Or there's um, I know a girl that you don't know, little Liza Jane. And of course, the chorus goes, Oh, Liza, little Liza Jane. So that's the one I'm going to use. Oh, Eliza, I'm just going to take that fragment, which I have got written down here somewhere for you. There you go. That's that. Hopefully you can all see that that's the rhythm we're talking about. Um, but I'm not going to show that to the student by any means at this point. And what I have got down on the floor, which I'll show you in a minute, are my floor spots. And I like my floor spots um, because I want to bring this rhythm to life and I want them to hear it orally and, and also feel it physically. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to sing the song and I'm going to model really strongly because I'm going to walk the beat. I'll show you the floor spots in a moment. Bear with me. I am, I promise you, there are floor spots here. So we might go, oh, Eliza. Okay. And I might tell you to the students, so how many beats are there? Oh, Eliza. And if you can't see it, which you can't, then you can probably hear that there are four beats. So we'd absolutely make sure that we understand there are four beats. I would walk the beat, the student would walk the beat, and then we'd actually tap the beat. You might want to do it with me. Off we go, oh Eliza. And I do like that physicality of tapping the beat. I put the heel of my hand onto my chest so I can feel. Oh Eliza. And the interaction with my voice is a really interesting thing as well. So four, four beats and then we're going to see if we can now tap the rhythm pattern of the words oh eliza notice i've taken the singing away because that just distracts us from the rhythm at that point oh eliza can you walk the beat and tap the rhythm pattern of the words at the same time let me show you how is what i would say to my students you have a go as well off we go oh Eliza yeah and that might take a little bit of doing you might need to model it again but really important because you've got the beat going on underneath and the rhythm bubbling along on top oh Eliza okay so that's stage number two we have physically felt the beat we've moved to the beat we've tapped the rhythm pattern of the words we've heard the rhythm pattern and now we're going to go down onto the floor so do bear with me while I just change the camera so I'm just going to see if I can get this to go to exactly the right place I'm hoping that that's about it yeah I reckon so so the next thing now is to just make this conscious and you can see yeah you can definitely see everybody here are my four floor spots that I've been working on so it's oh Eliza and what I might say to my students are how many sounds are there on beat number four? That might be the starting place. Off I go, oh Eliza. And 
together we'd say one sound sorry so we put something to represent one sound on that now i've used a cup i've got my ducks i could use those i've also got lots of little rubbers here you could use pencils anything you like and of course if you haven't got these floor spots then you just put something on the floor something to create the representation of the beat okay so we've got one sound oh eliza okay i might say how many sounds are there on the third beat oh eliza that might take a bit more doing because of course the problem is the e is really close isn't it oh eliza oh eliza but they should get that there because they felt it physically that there again there is one sound now we're coming to beats one and two the really interesting beat where we have a new rhythm and what we might do for this one is we might say how many sounds there are there on beat one and two and actually i'm going to use my sticks how many sounds are there on beat one and two? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay, and they should be able to hear that there are two sounds. Then you have to ask another question, and this question is Are the sounds even or uneven? Oh, okay. and notice I keep feeling the third and the fourth beat as well. Ideally, I'd do this walking, yeah, I'd still be walking. Um, so, are the sounds are the two sounds even or uneven? And you hope you're, you're leaving your pupil towards identifying the fact that these sounds are uneven. So, which is the shorter sound is the next question. Oh, Eliza. And you should hear, it's really very easy at that point to say, well, the first sound is the longer one and the second sound is the shorter one. Absolutely. So I'm going to put that there. And then I'm going to put this one here because this sound comes halfway through that second beat. And this is how we're going to say this rhythm. And it's called a dotted crotchet and quaver rhythm or a dotted quarter note and eighth note rhythm. And the rhythm language you're going to use is tai ta ta ta. Often me. Tai ta ta ta. And notice that I'm using rhythm french time names rhythm language it's up to you whether you use those or whether you use a different language this works this absolutely works and i would use this as for just a very short uh, space of time before i then go into metrical counting but in the first week i would use this um, french time names. i would use rhythm rhythm language and then possibly depending on the student go into metrical counting the week after so that's how to introduce dotted crotchets and quavers, dotted quarter notes and eighth notes in the way that works for me. I'm not saying it's the only way, of course, there's other ways as well. But I think what's important about this is that I've started with the sound and the physical experience, taking it back to a representation before following that up in another week where I might show them the actual written notation in a flashcard and then turn it into metrical counting. So I'm going literally from the sound and the physical feeling to the actual experience of reading it rather than the other way around. So there you go, how to teach, one way of teaching dotted crotchets, dotted quarter notes. Hope you found that useful. Bye for now.